All right, we're here back on the All Track and Field Media Monday. Throws coach Whitney Sear joins us right now. And Whitney, uh, let's let's jump right into it. Um, this past weekend was kind of the last, you know, full squad build up towards championship season. You got New England's coming up this weekend, then any tens a couple weeks after that. So what did you take away from that last kind of full squad prep there? Um, so definitely at, at Boston University, it's a huge meet. Um, every one of my athletes was competing against um, about 50 other competitors. Um, so that meet, um, I can kind of see how they can dial in on uh, pressure on dealing, uh, dealing with a lot of people being there, um, a lot of people watching you, um, and how you handle um, really focusing on your technique and your performance um, when there's a lot on the line. So it's definitely one of our more high pressure meets. Um, so um, seeing how they can handle that is definitely the biggest benefit of going there. All right, um, kind of building off that and how they're dealing with pressure, um, something we're, we're kind of looking to ask everybody we're talking to today is track meets are really long. Yeah. They're, you know, <laughs> 10, 11, 12 hours. They're a whole day. Yeah. And for your throwers, you go out there and throw three times, that's, you know, what, a minute and a half of work, 90 seconds? Yeah, that's, it's that's pretty that's short. very little in a long day. <laughs> yes. How, as a coach, how do you try to keep them focused throughout a day knowing they've only got that little bit to do in yes. that huge meet? Um, well, usually throwing events go first, so usually by the time we get there, um, you know, within an hour or two, they're already uh, taking their uh, warm-ups. Um, so it's, we have it a little bit easier, for sure, um, because our events kind of roll right back to back at the start of the meet. Um, but in between events, um, making sure that, you know, they're eating something, that they're sitting down, not walking around a lot, um, and, um, you know, working on their technique, thinking about what they're going to do in the circle, trying to maintain focus on what they would like to do um, is definitely important. So um, we're a little bit lucky that at least we get to get the ball rolling at the start of the meet pretty fast. All right. Um, can you take us inside the life of a thrower a little bit? It's probably not something a lot of people are really familiar with. No. <laughs> so what's, what does day-to-day -day training look like for a thrower? What are your goals, you know, throughout the week leading up to a meet and then at a meet? Okay. Um, so usually at the start of the week, um, I have them focus on a lot of uh, high volume throwing. So I'll try to get just a lot of reps in, make sure um, that they're spending a lot of time in the circle. Um, and different weeks we focus on um, different themes. So um, a lot of my throwers, their technique might be a little bit off, but usually all in the same way. So, um, for instance, with my shot putters, um, if they're not driving off of their right leg enough, the focus for that week meet might be, um, you know, drills where you're really focusing on using your right leg um, in the shot put. So it depends. Um, I take video at every single meet. So what I do on Sundays is I sit down, I watch all of the video, try to um, establish any sort of uh, commonalities in the some of their technical flaws, um, and then I structure my week based off of what we most need to improve on. Um, and then um, we do <laughs> every Wednesday, um, I call it Throga. We do a recovery session with them where um, we take them through all sorts of different yoga poses um, for um, just dynamic uh, flexibility, um, range of motion. Um, at first, the throwers are a little resistant to the idea of you uh, doing yoga. Um, <laughs> I had one kid who he started the season off not really being able to touch his toes, but now he can touch his toes. So um, I like to give them uh, usually about four days of throwing, and then we have that one day of throwga mixed in um, as a recovery day. So. All right, that's awesome stuff. Now, when we talked to Coach Emerson during the fall season, Cross country, really, the whole season boils down to like three weeks at the end of the yes. year. Yes. It's yeah. a little different with track because you have the chance to qualify for nationals the whole year long. Yes. But at the same point, I think a lot of people, you know, take whether it's a success or a failure for a season, these last couple of weeks when you're in championship meets. So what's, for you, is going to make a successful season for the throwers here as we come down to the stretch? Um, for the throwers, it's 
peaking uh, during championship season. Um, so I wanted to establish our season within the first two weeks. I wanted nearly everybody um, to get a personal record. Um, and then um, once we start getting into championship season, I want them to make sure that they have improved on those performances that they've already done well at at the beginning of our season. So um, especially at conferences, that's when I want everybody to hit their peak performance. Um, so we're just, as we're getting down to the last couple um, weeks of our season, just making sure that we're sort of polishing those technical flaws that they might have, um, making sure that they feel comfortable and confident when they're in the circle um, is important, um, and uh, complementing that with their strength training uh, just to make sure that they are ready to go once conference meet comes around. Right. And speaking of early season PRs, one person to sing single out, we're going to talk to her later. Emily Quinn had a monster throw at the start of the she year. She did. And for her, it's really the cap to four years of work. Can you just oh, talk about her career and her senior season a little bit? Yep. Yeah. So I always, <laughs> I always kind of tease her. She came in as a walk-on. Um, she was only throwing like 32 feet in the shot put, which is okay, um, but... I decided with her, I wanted to try her doing the weight and the hammer throw. Just seeing how it would go. Um, and her freshman season, she started to pick it up pretty well. Um, so she hit 11 when she was a freshman. And then um, once she was a sophomore, she had a huge breakthrough. Um, she threw four, over 14 meters. Um, so that was when I knew once she hit that 14 meter mark, that's when I knew, okay, this is the event for her. Um, she stopped throwing the shot put, and now the only thing that we're focused on every single um, week is on weight and hammer. Um, so she has, she's one of the hardest working athletes I've ever worked with here. So um, her hard work is just completely paying off right now. Um, she's focused, she's dedicated. Um, she always wants to get better every single practice that she comes in. So that's what's made the difference with her, I think. Um, she's constantly looking at the video that I'm taking of her in practice. Um, I also have her watch um, the forms of some professional hammer throwers, some collegiate division one throwers. Um, so we're constantly talking about her technique and what she can do to get better. And um, she's definitely a student of the of the sport. She loves it. So um, it's been fantastic working with her for four years. So really hope, um, we have big hopes for the end of the season, um, for the next couple weeks. Um, so, you know, it's, it's been a long ride with Quinn, but it's it's been a fun ride. It's been amazing working with her. All right, awesome. We're going to talk to her a little later this yeah. afternoon. Um, before we let you go, Whitney, um, last question on Media Monday. you got to share a fun fact about yourself. Maybe <laughs> a hobby, a skill, maybe what, what's something people don't know about Whitney's here? Um, well, I guess a lot of people don't know. I was able to study abroad in South Africa um, when I was in college, and I actually got to take a tour of Nelson Mandela's prison cell. All right. See anything interesting in there? Um, no, it's a pretty tiny cell, but I thought it was pretty. Also, there are a ton of penguins on the island that he was, yeah. All right. <laughs> so I got to see some <laughs> penguins. I got to see M Nelson Mandela's prison cell, so... Penguins in South Africa. There you go. There's a, there's a thing you didn't know, Raven Nation. That's Whitney Sear. I'm Matt Janik. That's going to do it for us here on Media Monday. <laughs>